Hello, uh, we have a recording of our most recent show that was hanging out on a hard drive, so we thought we'd just upload it. Absolutely. For you at home to watch in your time of need. Yes. Let me now or in a few months' time. Or both. Or both. Um, Watching on the once as layers. There is, yeah, there are. There is, there are. Um, Good in the Manchester. Yeah, the Frog and Bucket. Our favourite sound technician ever. It's true. Shout out to you. Uh, Colin. Colin. I knew that. And enjoy. This, uh, we're going to be like a little montage of walking through Manchester. Maybe over over these words. Um, and then uh, and then it will kind of finish on Frog and Bucket. And then then like there'll be a picture. Like there'll be a video of us. Hi, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Frog and Bucket. Please welcome to the stage, Harry and Chris. and it will zoom through the first two songs that were kind of intro songs and then it will cut in at a perfect moment when we'll say Hi, thanks for choosing to tune in as we bring you this brand new exclusive If you're thinking who's this or what's with the music allow these two kids to introduce things Age five, we both played our school nativity. And we've been destined since then to share stages. This is what you get when you mix a world poetry slam champion. With his mate Chris. Hello. <laughs> Slightly, long, slightly longer than usual, that line. <laughs> it's fine, I wrote that line, so it's okay. <laughs> As teenagers, we played our school battle of the band. And I guess we both won in a way, because Chris won first prize. Has won most potential. Which was an award they made up on the day. Well, we both made waves in our solo scenes Now we know comedy's where we're supposed to be Having conquered the equally hilarious worlds of jazz, jazz and slam poetry <laughs> You see, we started writing songs for each other And then others came along as we started performing them So if the three is dedicated to Earthlings We've decided to widen our audience This one's for the aliens Beaming all the way into outer space This one's for the aliens If you've got ears in, on, or round your face This one's for the aliens Maybe a sense of representative in the place This one's for the aliens Maybe we could represent the whole human race And you might think we're not qualified I once got described as a lesser sexy Greg Rosetsky <laughs> Well, you might think we're not qualified, so what if I thought the song Sexy Back was about Justin Timberlake's back being sexy? We wrote a song about a panda getting pregnant. Then they announced that that panda got pregnant. We wrote a song about the world being predicted to end. And since then... Well, the world hasn't ended. You're welcome. A song about England's World Cup chances. And we somehow reached the semi-final. And we performed it in Scotland. Every day. For a month. And survived. Which was equally surprising. <laughs> So we think that we got a good thing going on as we spread the good news through the universe And if we bring a few new fans to the earth That would really help us to get through some merch We hope that they're nice and they're kind and they like the earth's comedy rap jazz scene And that there's every chance to logically advance If they still use CD players, that should be handy <laughs> We just want to shout about the world that we're in All the beautiful people and their beautiful friends Like the one over there and the one next to them The one next to them and 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 the one next to them Right, full disclosure, the first time we ever performed this song There were six people in the audience Lovely, lovely intimate gig And it was nice we were able to shout out everyone, get them all involved And very happy problem to have tonight That we did not necessarily have in the Swansea leg of the tour There are more than six of you here. So, uh, should we do the quick version? We just want to shout about the world that we're in All the beautiful people and their beautiful friends Like the ones over there and the ones next to them And the ones next to them And that's everybody to get everyone from the planet in the same room And be a bit of a squeeze like accordions But after 20 years of playing to earthlings We just thought we might broaden our audience This one's for the aliens Feels bold to tell a room of humans that it's not for them This one's for the aliens Honestly, thank you so much for coming Please don't leave before the end This one's for the aliens Our agent said to win awards Your show needs to have a narrative. This one's for the aliens. Literally just an hour of Harry and Chris. We've played to five and to five thousand, and tonight somewhere in between. Did a gig girl went to high five a woman in the front row, and she fallen, fallen asleep. asleep. <laughs> Shout out Macclesfield. Shout out Macclesfield. <laughs> 
We've come a long way since teenage stages and Lynx Africa centered practices. I'm 20 years of playing to Earthlings. Now we're taking it into Galactic Chris. This one's for the aliens. As they say, me casa es su plan. This one's for the aliens. I hope the aliens also speak basic Spanish. This one's for the aliens. From London to Manchester, back down to Thanny. This one's for the aliens. And we know it's a bold claim to think that we could represent the whole, the whole kind of world. Uh, but we thought if we maybe told you a bit more about ourselves, you might feel a bit more comfortable with that as a concept. And we're going to do that in the form of a game. Yeah. Uh, everyone loves a game. But it does involve standing up, which is a bit annoying. So luckily, Chris has got quite a cool, sophisticated technique yeah. he learned in this kind of teaching days. I yeah, guess. Uh, bribery. Uh, <laughs> we've, got, we've got an amazing prize up for grabs, Manchester. So if you'd like to jump to your feet to play this next game, thank you very much. Oh, yes. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Immediate movement, that is Lovely. surprising. That is, again. It's a Sunday. <laughs> Wonderful. Uh, so, this is a very simple game. Uh, it's called Harry or Chris. Uh, <laughs> and we're going to tell you some statements. You have to guess which one of us it's about. Uh, and as we learned at this point in Swindon, not everyone knows which one's which. So, uh, just uh, to really clarify hello, my name is Harry. <laughs> uh, my name is And Chris. Perfect. <laughs> so, if you think it's about me, put your hands on your head. If you think it's about Chris, put your hands on your bum. Uh, if you get it wrong, kind of sit down. Last person standing gets an amazing prize. Uh, what's not to love? So, question number one. Which one of us has got a birthmark on their left bum cheek? Okay, heads for Harry, bums for Chris. He's got a birthmark on their left bum cheek. If you get it wrong, you sit down. Uh, but the correct answer is... Both. Yep. Uh, so... Great news for you, everyone's still in. So, great news for us, very exciting sleepover. Um, but, uh, let's go into the knockout stage. Which one of us has not one but two Waitrose Lawsy cards for free coffee, with the second one under the name Just In Case? <laughs> Heads for Harry, bums for Chris. Uh, correct answer is Harry. It is indeed. Harry. If you voted Harry for me, do that. take a seat. Lovely. Okay. Still got plenty. Pretty good. Plenty pretty good. Here. Lovely. Pretty good. Okay. Next one. Uh, which one of us was once a nude model? <laughs> Just a nude model. Heads for Harry. Bounce for Chris. <laughs> Not which one of us do you wish was. Which one of us? <laughs> so I see you. Correct answer is Harry again. Yes, indeed. So. <laughs> hey, no, 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 don't, no, don't listen to that man. No, no, no. no you just, it's bad lighting. That's it's not, bad lighting. It's you're not half, is it? It's not half. <laughs> it's the, you, you got, it's bad lighting. I mean, like the numbers is one thing, but the audible gasps of shock. <laughs> A new edition. <laughs> maybe, maybe give some background, some context. It doesn't make it better. <laughs> it was for a, uh, it was for a kind of friends art project. And you, you remember like Art Attack? They did sort of like from above, they take a picture. It's like that, but loads, kind of, lots of people, lots of people, uh, and we got the final image through, and I'd been cropped out. <laughs> so, so it's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Uh, which one of us on this leg of tour last year uh, did not poo for three days due to poor dietary decisions? <laughs> <laughs> Heads for Harry, bums for Chris. <laughs> Don't know where that came from. <laughs> uh, I love like, the jingle there. Which, uh, <laughs> Maybe it was a hint because that one was me. Ah. That's a fat Mr. Chris. <laughs> um, Eating more fibre this year. Yeah, love this stuff. <laughs> Which one of us once recorded a cover version of the song Gangnam Style so that their local cafe could use it without having to pay any royalties? <laughs> Sorry, Monster Chris. That was, of course, Mr. Chris Reed. That was me indeed. Oh, we still got lots in. This is great. Okay, we're going to do a quick far round. Uh, which one of us last week, this is true, 
Uh, Google search, what language do they speak in Russia? <laughs> uh, yep, that was me. Uh, which one of us? Ask the other one if you have to stir a lasagna. <laughs> Harry again. <laughs> oh, there we go. Which one of us asked the other one if banks are open on bank holiday? <laughs> uh, that was me again. Hey. That's a real quick fire round. Uh, okay, which... Have we got anyone left in? Any up top? Yes. Beautiful. Okay. Which one of us uh, was having a massage, was offered a happy ending, said, no thanks, just the sh- shoulders, and then proceeded to tell the masseuse about Jesus Christ for 20 minutes. <laughs> it was, of course, Mr. Chris <laughs> Reed. Yeah, uh, I think we do have a winner up top. Ah, we may have had, that might have been both, anyone still standing? No, that was two votes for me, I think. Oh, right. <laughs> you're both right. still in. The finalists are both still in, then. That's fine. I think you're still in. Back oh, in. unless you don't want a piece. Is that who, else is, who else is in? I think there's a, there's a gentleman upstairs that I saw. Oh, no, no he's just tall. Know. He's oh, tall so and sitting down. So hey, we're we're ready. Ready. hey! Have you got... Um... So what's happened there is that you had already won, but I still got to tell everyone Chris's massage story. <laughs> um, we will give you your prize in the interval, which is... A Harry and Chris CD! Yay! It's a viable media format. Um, <laughs> my my favourite part about that story was that Chris called me afterwards immediately, and his exact words were, I feel more tense now than when I went in. <laughs> Um, so now everyone definitely trusts us to represent the planet. Uh, figure we should get on with it. Um, one of the things that we think are amazing in this world is, of course, the people on it. And we think some of the best people in the planet are the people who come to Harry and Chris Kids. Hey. Oh, come on. So we wanted to get some of your opinions on things you felt were worth shouting out about. Yeah, because this next song is just about things we love about planet Earth, things we think represent us well. Uh, so if you've got any ideas for things that represent us well, then we're going to have a shout out in a second. Harry's going to write them down and they will appear in the song. So. Things you think represent planet Earth well. Three, two, one. Oranges. <laughs> Manchester, oranges. Oh, 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 oh my god. Okay. Turtles, flamingos, ice cream sandwiches. Narwhal tusks. This is great. Usually everyone shouts out at once and then there's silence, but you guys are smashing it. This is great. <laughs> Okay, okay. Right. Okay, I think we've got enough just before someone said jazz music. Um, um, Okay, one big finale. Hey, thank you very much. A bit of material on that. That's great. Um, So, Manchester, oranges, turtles, flamingos, ice cream sandwiches, hot water bottles, beef tomatoes, and Harry and Chris. Uh, So when you hear those, that's when you know it's the freestyle section, because otherwise it will be so slick you might not be able to tell. (laughs) Cause when the eyes of the universe are coming your way, you make sure you got something to say. Like how despite looking like cold porridge, our brain is somewhat able to hold knowledge. And no matter the advancements in robotics, there will always be a queue at the post office. How they call dodgers, but we don't dodge them. What? How the phrase exists that as a load of old trollop and open fire in an old cottage, and the fact that we never stop trying to solve problems. How fish sing a dawn chorus, Ooh. and when we die, our pets mourn for us. <laughs> 
When Bristol tested buses powered by human poo, the first route tested was the number two. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're looking for a reason why to visit us, we got trees and kites. The sun, seas and sky. Sometimes all three combined. We've got Game of Thrones. Up to season five. Some people like cheese and wine. These, These are fine, fine, but I'd rather have a decent sized pizza slice. We build giant machines that mean we can fly. So get down here at the speed of light. We don't know when this ride will be over. We, we don't know when our time will be up. We don't know if we've lived how we're supposed to If the things that we did were enough All we know is that life is an open book It's up to us to put stuff on the page So when the eyes of the universe are coming your way You make sure you got something to say Like how if Natalie Portman appeared in a panto That could be shortened to a portmanteau <laughs> How yakka kayak, tangy nat and panda had napa all animal palindromes <laughs> how opinions don't have to be set in stone Or maybe they do, that opinion's not set in stone How when in Rome we say when in Rome because when in Rome When musicians go to the gym they get semi-toned <laughs> <laughs> Or how if your friend Steph got some heart-stopping news You could use a stethoscope to see if stethoscope. Or if another friend got the news on the moon, you would need a telescope just to tell he's coped. <laughs> or if two apple juice swigging musical birds bought a flute in some islands of Mexico, we'd see a couple of capella packing a cappella pelicans pick up a piccolo in Acapulco's archipelago. <laughs> We see a couple of capella back in a capella pelicans pick up a piccolo and a couple is like a pelago. A couple of capella back in a capella pelicans pick up a piccolo and I remember no but ever ever. We don't know if there's anyone out there, or if, or if there, there is, do they, they know about us? us? We don't know if they'll ever make contact, or, or if, if they, they did, did, would they, they even be fussed? But if they did want a taster of life on Earth, some, some experts have come in today. So when the eyes of the universe are coming your way, you make sure you got something to say. Like, I really like so many places in the world, but one of my favourites is definitely Manchester. Yay! It's almost as exciting as a sleepover when I saw this man's chest hair. <laughs> Yes, I really like oranges. I really like squeezing half rhymes into my rhymes like syringes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yes, I really like turtles. Uh, Chris, how much do you know about turtles? Uh, the, the turtle amount of my knowledge <laughs> is low. <laughs> Absolutely. We wish that someone taught us. Hey! <laughs> you did that joke on porpoise. <laughs> That's a type of dolphin. <laughs> Is it? I thought it was a little turtle. I thought it was... <laughs> oh, it, uh, it just sounds a, ter- a lot like tortoise. Like, yeah. Terrapin! Terrapin. Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, if I took one out one day, we could go terrapin bowling. <laughs> Absolutely. I really like flamingos. I like in the circus when they jump through a ring of fire, or as I like to call it, flamingos. <laughs> yes. Uh, I really like ice cream, and I really like sandwiches. If only I could combine the two, because it's now going to sing a song about ice cream sandwiches, just for you. <laughs> what? <laughs> uh, ice, ice cream sandwiches. Uh, the famous ice cream sandwiches yeah. brands, yeah. like, uh... <laughs> Your so- I don't want to get in the way of this. <laughs> oh! <laughs> ice cream sandwiches. <laughs> I've got so much to say about ice cream sandwiches. I've definitely had an ice cream sandwich in my life. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> First, you get the ice cream, and then you get the bread. <laughs> You probably don't use bread. <laughs> you use something else instead. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's so real. <laughs> when you make an ice cream sandwich, it don't use whole meal. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, and if you thought that wasn't one of the best, it was a good impression. And now we know next time you make an ice cream sandwich, there's some way for progression. 
Oh yeah, is that that makes more sense? Absolutely. <laughs> yes. Uh, <laughs> Um, I really like tomatoes, but I also really like when you have a bit of meat preceding your tomatoes, beef or tomatoes, then you choose do you want beef or tomatoes, or as we learned in Hull recently, there's such thing as a beef tomato. Thank you very much. Very big old tomato. <laughs> one of the biggest, absolutely. Just like one of the biggest comedy rap duos in the world is Harry and Chris. Also, one of the only ones, but that's not relevant. <laughs> And you know where one day comedy rap jazz is going to be huge, I've heard, is in some island somewhere near Mexico where you would also find a couple of capella back in a capella fella can pick up a bigger low and a capella is like a fella go. We don't know when this ride will be over. We don't know when our time will be up. We don't know if we've lived how it's supposed to be. We don't know if we've lived how it's supposed to be. All we know is that life is an open book. It's supposed to be stuff on the page. So when the eyes of the universe are coming your way, you make sure you've got something to say. Porpoise just sounds like tortoise. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I wish I could say that I knew that <laughs> that I, it was I, a dolphin. I, but I heard the joy in your voice. And, <laughs> oh man. No. Uh, so, yeah, it's, they, they both get wet. I mean, they get wet. Yeah, what mostly. What do you need? Mostly underwater. <laughs> <laughs> Lovely stuff. Um, thank you so much for those suggestions. Uh, we're actually quite close to the end of our tour. We've only got three days left. But if you wanted to come to any of those and shout out exactly those things again, uh, I would really enjoy repeating that one. It, yeah, time. it worked for beef tomato. Beef tomato. <laughs> shout out Hull. In Hull. We didn't know what beef tomato was. And Chris said, does anyone else know? And in a oh. weird moment of synchronicity, everyone in the audience at the same time just went like this. <laughs> <laughs> like, big, big tomato <laughs> to just let us know. <laughs> Very surreal. We're all learning. But, uh, but we're we're, all learning. you know, you learn stuff on tour. <laughs> <laughs> um, fantastic. Uh, we've just got one more song before the interval, but then we'll be back in the second half. Um, thank you so much for having us. That song was kind of about celebrating the little things. We thought we'd finish this half on something a bit bigger. Yeah, we wanted an example uh, to represent planet Earth, a kind of an epic example of countries coming together to create something beautiful, uh, something sophisticated, something high quality. And of course, the first thing we thought of was the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> because it brings people together from all across Europe, from Australia <laughs> to Israel. I mean, it is just amazing. And, and we wanted to enter in an official capacity, so we looked up the rules. We wanted to kind of make it real. Yeah, it had to be under three minutes. That was very strict, so we, we kept to that. Uh, we chucked in a key change. We presumed that was a rule. Um, <laughs> That's pretty much all we could find, but yeah. we did uh, make a backing track, we kind of made a music video for it, hired a smoke machine, we wanted to take it seriously. And I think that's because um, Eurovision, it was, in, it was in May this year, and what Eurovision is, we realise, when it comes to the judging at least, this is kind of like a popularity contest, you know, people just kind of vote for their neighbours and their friends, and to be entering a European-based popularity contest in May, after Brexit had just happened, uh, <laughs> we thought it was a real kind of tricky thing to do. So we thought, who better to try and thread that delicate needle than uh, the nation's favourite comedy rap jazz boys? And um, we'd, we'd love to kind of play it for you tonight, if there's anyone in from Europe. But um, this... This is, this is our kind of effort. You know, there's a few different languages involved. It's kind of a simple, unifying message, as they often have. But um, yeah, we'd, we'd love to play it for you. This is, this is our Eurovision song. Um, well, it's, it's called Sorry, obviously. Uh, and I guess what's exciting is since writing it, quite what we're apologising for has changed sort of three or four hundred times, but uh, we feel like there'll always be something, you know? You know that feeling when You're hanging out with your friends But you get the sense You're out of love You know that feeling when about 52%. 51.9. <laughs> of you decides that your time is up. 46 sweet years. Could be 47 sweet years. 
Well, we just want to say Not by say we mean We hope same. you're feeling okay If you're still listening Here's two, two British dudes to set the record straight Tell them Chris Sorry, a student schlein who's so desolé Los sentimos nos desculpi, chidis piace Via les natil, vios jaun amie Fabandame se prashame, we just wanna say we're sorry A couple of Latvians nodding on top, we see you <laughs> It feels like everywhere you look today It's easy to find ways that things are divided May have got so caught up in Britain being great Forgot about trying to keep a kingdom united It's hard enough even in your own family Deciding between four of you what you might have a tea Imagine how difficult that specific decision is The times the people involved by another 15 million We were never the best Europeans anyway That the languages wasn't our forte It's pronounced forte We hope he still let us visit the Champs-Élysées Even if our relationship status C'est compliqué We may not have a reputation for our top Cuisine. It makes it strange to you that we've still got a queen But other than complaining and drinking lots of tea If there's one thing the Brits can do, it's apology Sorry, as to the shrine, who's on the soul Los sentiments nos desculpi, chidus piace Via les natil, vios jaun amie La pandemia se pashame We just wanna say without European influence This song would never happen The chorus chords are stolen from Packer Bell's canon Even this very language came to us from Anglo-Saxons It's all infused with raw Bulgarian passion Our jawline and demeanors could be Strikingly Vikingy This land has not gone anywhere At least as far as I can see We're still Brits in Europe Whatever else we try to be So take this key change With a sense of irony All together now Sorry As to the schlein Nous sommes désolé La sense of us Nos desculpi I can't hear you Denmark Fearless Until we also Shout at me My band of me we just wanna say we're sorry If we couldn't fit your country in our song We're sorry If we didn't somehow still pronounce it wrong We're sorry We always miss your revision anyway We're sorry We're still neighbours and we love you so we say We're sorry So sorry Thank you very much, see you in the next half, thank you uh, What a great half that was Oh, I love that I'm just gonna pop for a wee and then come back and, and listen to some more Grab a beer yeah, yeah. I saw people doing intervals. That's good. But the good news is, we, you can just crack straight on with the yeah. second half. So enjoy the second half. Time. I just noticed What that. was your favourite part of the first half? Oh man, uh, probably the porpoise. Yes. Porpoise bit. Oh wow. Do you I know now? Yeah, the porpoise is a dolphin, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. I think. Anyway, we're going to crack on the second half. So we're going to talk over the Welcome back. <laughs> Hello. Hi. Thank you for not leaving. Um, everyone have a fun interval? Good. I know some of you might not have done because you were so tense thinking, did they win Eurovision or not? And sadly, we sent in our three minute song and we got a reply after two and a half minutes saying there was no way they could include it because it was too political. Uh, and we thought, brilliant, we've just become censored artists. Uh, and we kind of felt vindicated in a way because uh, the UK's official entry not only came last, it came out in the news there was a scoring error and we should have actually come last by a further six points than we actually did. <laughs> <laughs> but we uploaded our song to our YouTube channel anyway and to be honest it got a like to dislike ratio that Theresa May could only dream of. But at the time, uh, we didn't get too long to dwell on it because we were invited to go and take part in an American talent show called Bring the Funny. And we realised there's a certain irony to us writing that song than ourselves leaving Europe, but that was not the intention. <laughs> and there were two things about this talent show that kind of got us excited. One was that they announced that they had celebrity judges. There were three celebrity judges, and we not heard of two of them, but one of them <laughs> was none other than Keenan Thompson a.k.a. Keenan from Keenan and Cat. And we thought, that is worth the trip alone. Exactly! 
Uh, and the second thing was we were we were writing this show at the time, and to go over and perform there, we had to get official work visas. And the name of these visas, it was an O1 type visa for aliens with extraordinary ability. <laughs> it's, it's too perfect. We have to go for it. Yeah, it was amazing. And the first part of the uh, visa application was to get letters of recommendation from like the most prominent people in your industry uh, and it all happened quite quickly over a weekend so we emailed everyone we knew on Friday and they all got back to us over the weekend saying uh, we can't do it we're too busy uh, but two of them said uh, we're busy but if you write them for us then we'll sign them for you <laughs> so we got two excellent letters of recommendation yeah. uh, <laughs> And we were allowed into the country, but the next stage was the show itself wanted to do a background check on us. We think they'd heard that we were such controversial artists. And this <laughs> involved going through all of our social media ever. Um, and I hope you don't want me saying this, Chris, but Chris was actually asked to delete six whole tweets from his kind of teenage years. Most yeah, of it was... well, uh, yeah, that is true. Uh, in my defence, they were all quoting other people. Uh, and the worst one was, was quoting, quoting me. me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Uh, and I hope you don't mind me saying has, but Harry was sent a 32-page uh, PDF document of questionable material. <laughs> but I was not asked to delete anything. Yeah. Okay, I've just gone kind of close to the line many, many times. Yeah, some good stuff. Uh, There's some good stuff in there. Yeah, people don't know what to think at this point. I'll give you an example. I was playing Scrabble with my mum, as all controversial stories begin, and... <laughs> I mean, the letters emerged such that, including one of the letters on the board, I could use all seven of my letters to make an eight-letter word across two triple word scores, plus a 50-point bonus for these new letters. And I mean, there were some high-scoring letters involved. There was a C, there was a K, and we tend to not really swear on stage, but essentially, I did call my mum a dickhead. <laughs> Got a lot of points for it, took a screenshot, chucked it on Instagram. Four years later, American government gets involved. <laughs> and <laughs> it was either the language that sort of caused some alarm bells, or it was the fact that I had my location setting turned on and it was sent from the West Bank in Palestine. <laughs> Who knows what America's got a bigger problem with? However, we were allowed onto the show, we were allowed in the country, and the next step was we got to meet the producers, and they were some of the most enthusiastic people we've ever met in our lives. It was amazing. They met us at the airport, they said, Harry, uh, Chris, we're so excited that you're here. Harry, it's amazing that you've used your kind of maths degree to change the face of the UK's poetry landscape. And Chris, we can't believe that the Duke of Edinburgh himself made you an award out of bronze. <laughs> They'd read our references and I mean, we were feeling good. Our visas said we were extraordinary. They said we were amazing. We thought we were going to smash it. We thought just in case, just in case anything's sort of a bit different over here, let's try our stuff out at a local open mic night the day before we were going to perform on television. It's just to check they get all of the references, they know who Justin Welby is, that kind of thing. And I mean. <laughs> Like we say local open mic night, it took place in a chicken restaurant and that night there was a lot more chicken than laughter, which is never the way around we hope for at our gigs, but it was the day before recording, it was too late to change our choice of kind of song, personality, accent or indeed career. Um, so. All we could do is just kind of plow ahead and we went onto the show and we performed our song and thankfully this time there was more laughter than chicken but mainly because they were not allowed to bring food into the studio. <laughs> Uh, it wasn't excellent, but the way that it worked was that there were ten acts that each performed and then the judges chose six of them to go through to the next round. But before you found out if you'd gone through or not, you had to do these kind of backstage interviews. And we'd done one of these before, we kind of knew what to expect. We feel like we're fairly upbeat guys as far as things go, but we are just not on that level. They would ask things like, can you just look into the camera, tell everyone back home how proud you are to have made it to perform in America right now? Or well, they said to Chris, can, you know, the prize money for this show is $250,000. What would you do with that kind of money if you won? And Chris said... Uh, stick it in an ISA, probably. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Thank you. There you go. <laughs> That's the reaction I was expecting, but... <laughs> I don't think they knew what an ISA was, for starters. <laughs> I don't think they knew what we were. Yeah, <laughs> 
Not only that, we remembered this. We, um... Oh, yeah. They did... There was, like, this little camera before you went on stage, just for a chance, you used to film a, like, five-second bit to be like, hey, Mum, I'm going on TV, I'm having a great time, etc. We saw the acts before us going up, and they're going like, yeah, hello, we're going to smash it, see you on tour, and, and shout out Utah. And they, said, um, and they said to us, you, know, you guys are from Britain, so if you could say something about how America is different, all that kind of thing, that'd be really good. So we were about to go up on the stage to perform for the first time, and Chris just went, hi, guys, the milk's weird here, isn't it? <laughs> It is weird, it is weird, to be fair. <laughs> so we were just like fitting right in. Uh, and, and yeah, we had to do one of these interviews again before finding out the results. And it was a similar kind of vibe. They said, you know, guys, are you excited about the next round? And we said, we're not going to be in it, so no. <laughs> And I mean, we, we knew we'd done something wrong when they stopped filming and they got the one sort of British member of camera crew to come and have a word with us, almost as a sort of translator between their kind of LA positivity and our innate British misery. And he said, guys, can you just sort of cheer up for the camera? You don't know that you've gone out yet. And we said, yet. And he said, come on. And so... I mean, what it meant was it led to this sort of genuine kind of reality TV moment. We were backstage uh, and they were going to announce who had gone through and there were two possible acts left. And out of nowhere they called up our names. But what was doubly exciting was any time they spoke to us or about us, they put on these weird sort of Dick Van Dyke Cockney accents. So what they actually said was, Arian Grizz. <laughs> so we weren't sure if that was us or not. And, <laughs> Somehow we got through to the second round and we very quickly realised we had just performed the song that had gone the least worst in the chicken shop. We had no idea what we were going to do in the second round. Yeah, so we, we thought about it and we realised the best thing to do would be to write a brand new song. Uh, but we only had two days, so uh, we, that's what we did. We wrote a brand new song in our hotel room and uh, debuted it on American national television. Uh, <laughs> sure. And... Uh, <laughs> It was quite nerve-wracking, but um, it was kind of the only option at that point. Uh, and we kind of tried to talk about our, our American experience up to that point. Uh, and, and so yeah, we wrote the thing and we, we walked up on stage and the red lights came on and we said, uh, thanks so much for having us back, we've written a brand new song just for tonight. So for the very first time, and probably the very last time, apart from in sort of six months in Manchester maybe, we present to you American Back in Britain, we're considered quite upbeat chaps. In the States, we still have to up our game. So these English to American translations, perhaps, will go some way to explain that. When we say hello, we mean good evening, America! We've not slept in the last three days. We're pleasantly surprised to still be in the competition. I mean, we could not understand it when you tried to announce our names. When we say he and I are pretty good mates. We mean we've literally known each other for most of our lives. Well, you were my best man. And you were my best man. And you make me special ice cream sandwiches every night. <laughs> say tomato, you say tomato, it doesn't mean we can't be friends. We say oregano, you say oregano, that, that doesn't, doesn't make any sense. <laughs> they did not clap. <laughs> <laughs> we 
We say, where's the bathroom? And you say, what? We say, the bathroom. You say, oh, the restroom. Well, surely the restroom refers to a bedroom. Why would you go to the toilet for a rest? Especially when they've got that weird gap in the cubicle door so people can watch yeah. you. What is and that? also both quite tall. So five minutes before performing this song for the first time, me and Chris made eye contact over the top of another person going to the toilet. It was the opposite of a restful experience. <laughs> They should, they, should, they should call it the stress dream. <laughs> We're a jolly long way from home. So far. There's an ocean and more in between. But when we say we love doing this, so thank you for having us. That's exactly what we mean. Thank you. <laughs> And, and this time it did feel like it had gone better. And the way that the second round worked was it was a head-to-head -head round. So we were up against this American musical act and each of us performed. And then each of the three judges got one vote for who they wanted to put through to the semi-final. And the first judge voted for us, second judge voted for them, which meant it came down to the third and final judge, which was none other than Keenan Thompson. Our Keenan, who had just spudded us backstage, made all of our dreams come true. And he decided to give it to the other act who... <laughs> were dressed in sort of medieval dwarf outfits, sitting on clouds, singing about how they wished they could be Disney princesses, because to quote Keenan Thompson, it was more obvious that they came here to entertain. <laughs> didn't know what to make of that, you know? We, we tried so hard, we'd come so far, and in the end it doesn't even matter, and... I mean, we felt like giving up, but then we, we thought back to our favourite kind of TV programme, BBC Songs of Praise, and we thought... <laughs> But what, what, do they, what do they always say at the end of Songs of Praise, Chris? They always say, when you've, when you've given, given a up, couple of loaves couple and a few loaves. little fish, yep. then whip it all up to a tasty dish. <laughs> Don't give up on your dreams. It's more than it seems. Let's get on with the show. We've not watched it for a while, but that's the kind of vibe. And uh, we just thought maybe we need to double down, you know, dream big. I forget United Kingdom, United States. What yeah. if we try to unite the whole world for our music. Yeah, so all we decided to do was to write a song that all 7.7 .7 billion people around the world could agree on. Uh, and it was quite tricky, but we think we think we might have something. So we're just going to try it out on you uh, beautiful people tonight, Manchester. And, uh, uh, and yeah, and see what you think. Um, this is our song for planet Earth. <clears throat> We've all been in a womb That warm and watery room Take a look at the person sitting next to you It's someone else who swam around in amniotic fluids <laughs> You've been in a womb I've been in a womb, yeah, you came out alright, and I did too, so next time you feel blue, remember this tune, we've all been in a womb. <laughs> yeah. I smell a Grammy. <laughs> We all come from nothing, we've all grown, we're all honed in that warm womb zone. None of us are born knowing all we now know, yet we've all become so much more than our raw skin and bones. We've all got a heart in our chest, we all absorbed a part of the universe when we start our first breath. So not only do we all exist within that cosmic dust, the truth is bits of it are living within us. And while most of our lives, our paths won't have combined, We've all come together for this moment in time We're all here listening to Harry and Chris And we all promise to buy one of their CDs after this <laughs> We all come from that same sort of general place That's why I long for a world where some empathy reigns It doesn't matter whether you've had everything the same We can all make some efforts to relate 
You've been in a womb. Hey! I've been in a womb. Woo! You came out alright, and I did too. So next time you feel blue, Come on. remember this tune. We've all been in a womb. I would just like to apologise in advance that we'll be stuck in your head for weeks. <laughs> One of the first times we performed it, uh, a mum tweeted us the next day and said, thank you so much for your performance. My seven-year-old daughter went into school the next day and sung that to all of her teachers. <laughs> and, and it is catchy, you know, and it is true, we all start off in a womb, but we're not in a womb now, you know. I know it's warm, but it's a bit different. And so, it's sort of worth acknowledging that too. We're all human. We all take part in this race. From the starting gate, things already started to change. Some of us stayed at home and practiced their guitar every day. Some asked our girls. Who said no? But we asked anyway. <laughs> Some of us are faster and stronger. Some of us know we aren't, so we have to try harder for longer. Some of us will actively take part in the conga. Some of us cannot imagine there is a dance that is wronger. <laughs> we think different. Between us here, there is wisdom. We look different. It would be weird if we didn't. We are different. So it's an awkward buffet if we all bring the same thing to the table. Cause some are smart, some are kind, some are chalk and cheese in love, some are fun, some are cool, some will always keep in touch. Some of us are some of these that sort of seems enough, but between us we are all of the upper. That's beautiful, man. Thank you. It's really, it's really nice. We start in the same kind of place and then everything changes and we're all different and that's a good thing. It's a great thing. Yeah, it's nice. Um, well, we, we came across something else uh, while we were writing this song that um, we thought we'd try out. That's the, I think we're all not all on board so far. Um, but this is this is something else we, we came across. We're all going to die. <laughs> Most don't know how or why. Take a look at the person sitting next to you It's someone you might share a graveyard with in a few years <laughs> You'll be in a tomb I'll be in a tomb <laughs> Well some won't be for ages, some might be soon Buried or cremated it's still true, we'll all be in a tune. Uh, it was at this point in the songwriting process that Chris turned to me and said, I think this will be the sing-along number of the set. Uh, it's catchy, it's going to just be bad. We don't know, we, we realise we don't know which version the seven-year-old sang to her teachers. <laughs> Very, very different message. Uh, uh, but it feels like a sing-along crowd tonight in Manchester. Oh, yes. Well, if you feel like joining in with all 7.7 .7 billion people around the world, and everyone who ever has been, in the beautiful fact that you've been in a womb. I've been in a womb. You came out all right. You came out all right. And I did too. And I did Next time too. you feel blue. Next time you feel remember blue. Remember this tune. Remember this tune, we've all been in a womb. Oh. Oh. Singers, singers in the house. Lovely. I heard harmony. The most harmonious womb I've ever been in. <laughs> lovely um, that's on a more serious note that song is actually quite powerful for me at the moment because we um well we write these shows every we love doing this and in between it we've got our personal lives going on and I'm, I'm thrilled to announce that since our last show kind of speaking of babies I've actually become a godfather for the first time so pretty big deal I'm kind of responsible for the spiritual welfare of a little sort of human yeah, baby that's true. So, so, it's, so, it's, sorry to interrupt uh, I've, I've become a father Thanks, thanks very much. Um, sorry, I don't want to rain on your no, parade. No. It's, uh, it's my baby. What? <laughs> your, your godfather to my baby. Sure. So. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, I'm, yeah. I'm grateful for it. So. Yeah. It's, um, yeah, your, 
Yeah, so, so Chris has become a father, yes, which is so amazing. But I have become a godfather, so. <laughs> Sort of like, yeah, sort of like a father and a god. I mean, <laughs> like, you know, where's not, the, I don't think that's how it works. Sure. Where's, where'd, you, where'd you get the hat, you know? Um, <laughs> but actually, Chris, uh, well, I thought, just, just on that, no, Chris has written a beautiful song yeah. for him. Luke. Luke is yeah. his name. And, uh, <laughs> um, it's, and it's got a lovely story behind it. So, so I thought, if I, if I just sort of leave you to it, and then yeah. and you can do this, and the story and the song. No, I'd love to, yeah. No, um, <clears throat> Yeah, well, this song, this one this is a song I wrote for Luke. This is the first song I wrote for him. Uh, basically, when we were on tour last year, if we ever stayed overnight anywhere around the country, then uh, we'd improvise a song down the phone to my wife, who'd uh, play it to the bump. Uh, and, and then this is the song, I just wrote this song in the first week of his life. Uh, um, so this is the first song I wrote for him, uh, post wound. Uh, I believe is the medical term. Uh, yeah, and it's called Little Man. Because he's a guy. Well, he's a boy. He's a, so, yeah. <laughs> Little man, it's very nice to meet you. I'm your dad. What a crazy nine months you've had. Did you hear me singing to you from far away lands? Little man, come so far there's so much more to come to eat and drink and laugh and sing and run very years ahead to have the most excellent fun you don't know anything about the world you're in and I'd give anything to feel that way again but it's enough just to see that light in you Take care of it, I'll take care of you Little man You just weed in your own ear while I changed your nappy I'd be grossed out but it made me strangely happy Don't tell mum but I kinda wanna try it Make the most of people saying well done for doing a poo. <laughs> it's been ages since I was congratulated when my bowels moved. <laughs> Apart from by Uncle Harry, but that's a different story. <laughs> Three days is a long time. <laughs> Eating from your mouth now and not through a tube You sucked my thumb for an hour trying to turn it into a boob <laughs> It looks easy being a baby as far as I can see But it probably looks easy being me Little man Your mum's a superhero as you'll learn she loved you from two cells to full time And she's loved you every day since Little man I'll blink and the year will fly by I'm told that's how it feels in hindsight So I'll treasure every second of your life Don't know anything about the world you're in And I'd give anything to feel that way again You don't know what politics are You don't know about climate change You don't know what it's like to lose someone You don't know what it's like to hate You don't know about this world I've decided is good enough for you It's messed up, noisy, beautiful, alive and true it's become more beautiful since you arrived, Luke, little man. Welcome to the world, little man. Thank you very much. Chris Reed, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.
beautiful. I love that song. A couple of reasons. One, it is just nice to have a rest. <laughs> <laughs> also, it actually um, it inspired me to uh, to try and write my own song for Luke yep. because I just kind of think, you know. I just think, as a God, yeah. Father, um, <laughs> my role is to sort of, you know, support you in that, see if I can chuck any odd sort of knowledge bombs in there with you, and it's kind of... Uh, uh, yeah, well, I'm, so, I'm sorry for not letting you do this one at the baptism. It yeah, was, no, honestly, it's uh, fun. There's actually way more people here tonight, so that's nice. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Um, but I, d I wondered if you would be up for um, yeah, yeah, yeah. doing a bit of background well, it's music. It's quite similar be, music. Yeah, it's similar it's kind of vibe, I think I would be. That kind of thing? <laughs> That's actually exactly how it goes in my head, that's so good. Yep, you're right, you? Oh yeah, no, cool. no, 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 no. Um, So this is my song for Luke, um, and it's called Little Guy. <laughs> <laughs> because he's a boy. It's, 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 it's good, good joke. Thank you. Um, just as, as a sort of disclaimer, my mum came to see our show, and it was after this song she said that, Harry, when you sing, you really do realise how good Chris is at singing. So... <laughs> be involved um, but yeah this is this is my song little guy <laughs> the three second rule might not always apply for example if you drop some mint chocolate chip ice cream in some gravel doesn't matter how quickly you pick it up you can't trust the crunch anymore is it gravel is it chocolate who knows and why does everything taste like blood <laughs> got more graphic as tour's gone on. <laughs> Little friend, when someone says you drive them round the bend, I mean that sounds like a bad thing but that depends. What if they lived around the corner and needed a lift and you had space in your car, technically you could drive them around the bend, but in a helpful way. I guess I'm saying everything is relative. <laughs> Little hombre. In the words of the ancient prophet Peter Andre. Whoa, 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 whoa. When I get close to you, <laughs> take it to the chorus. <laughs> you don't know anything about the world you're in, but I know loads and I'm bigger than you, so maybe back off from my best friend. <laughs> But I look in your eyes and I see what he sees So I think I'm inclined to agree We'll take care of you So you can grow all my loads of money and eventually take care of me <laughs> Little guy Beautiful, so it's a beautiful song, man. It's a beautiful it's boy. Really nice. yeah, I it's a good boy. got to babysit him for the first time. Yes, big, you big four hours. It. Four hours, the longest four hours. And of he, life. he was awake. Wow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he is. I'm a, so normally he's really excited to see me. Yeah. Uh, and then I, he sort of starts crying and giving back, but can't do that when no. you're on that. Set. Oh yeah, wow! He it. Really stressful times. <laughs> uh, but it's good. So I had a bit of crying. Had to hang out and sleep. Yeah. It's, it's quite him or you. <laughs> well. <laughs> It's, it's quite a low benchmark to set for a friendship, I realise, because if I'd said that on the way up here with Chris, we had a great time, he started off asleep, woke up, and then cried, and I gave him a rice cracker, and he was fine. He <laughs> sort of doesn't feel like a sort of real, real connection, but he's great. He's amazing. He's a good boy. He likes you. Yeah. I've got his Christmas present. Uh, yeah, I know. Absolutely. That's a surprise for me, because he'll play more with the wrapping paper, probably. <laughs> it's not, which isn't an indication on the present. I'm sure you the present will be... know what it is. Hey, is it more wrapping paper? Because <laughs> he would go mean, nuts for that. <laughs> okay, yeah, well, it can be. <laughs> <laughs> that's great. I'll um, pass the parcel. Yeah, that's lovely. In which, I've actually got you a new Christmas present as of five seconds ago, so... <laughs> 
hope you like Duplo. Um, <laughs> you got a Duplo? Not going oh, Duplo. Oh, he loves Duplo. What? <laughs> <laughs> right, well, I've, I've, got, I've, got, I've got the receipt. Um, so, he's great. Um, and basically, we, we wrote this show. We think, we think this, well, there's lots of tricky stuff going on, but there is lots of amazing stuff as well. We wanted to try and highlight that. But also, on a, on a broader scope, we wanted to try and attract new life to Earth, I guess. And then we realised that Chris and his wife, they brought their own new life to this world. So they kind of took a shortcut. And they don't like me calling it that, but that is how I see it. And I mean, I mean not only well, that, Luke's yeah, amazing. Yeah, we're, we're talking about it. Luke's a bit like an alien in some ways. He, um, he doesn't understand English, for starters. And he doesn't have any knees. He's got no knees! Yeah! I've, I've checked for four hours, so... <laughs> definitely not. Uh, he's, he's got like a big kind of baby head, like an alien. Very sweet. Definitely big old head. That way you know he's probably yours, so that's good. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, but I mean, also, we, we, we kind of felt like we were aliens when we were in America. Not only did it say so on our visas, but also they didn't really understand where we were coming from. Uh, and also, to have to prove that you're extraordinary to even be allowed into a country in the first place feels like quite a hectic state of affairs. And we, we feel like the world can feel quite divided these days, but there are lots of things we do have in common. So if you're up for it, um, this is, this is going to be our last song. Before the spontaneous encore. Yeah. Um, but <laughs> Uh, but if you were up for it, we'd love to just kind of come together one last time. So if, if, you, if you are up for standing up for us one more time, but this time not all at once, could you stand up for us first if you have won yourself for Harry and Chrissy Day today? Um, could you stand up for us? And be honest, be honest this time. Uh, if, if you knew that a porpoise was not a type of turtle or tortoise. Wow, <laughs> that is that is nearly everyone. Thank you. Yes, yes. Yeah. Come on. These are your people, Chris. Um, right. Uh, could you stand up for us if you have ever been inside a womb? <laughs> Smashed it. Right. All that's left to say is hi. Thanks for choosing to tune in as we brought you this brand new exclusive If you're thinking who's this or what's with the music For the last 60 minutes what have you been doing? Age 27 we played in Manchester And it was really really wicked And the style they might not have been sure but they soon got on board And we got a standing ovation before we'd even finish Wow It's been great, thanks for coming to play There's just one thing that's left to say This one's for the aliens See, you're an alien and you're an alien too This I one's for the aliens It to you and you and you and you and you and you This oh. one's for the aliens okay. We've got to stick together in life's cruel cool battlefield This one's for the aliens This has gone so much better than Macclesfield <laughs> But if you haven't enjoyed the show, we would just like to say to you Sorry, a student schlein who's so desolate Los sentimos nos descubrí, she just be a If after the show we put our birthmarks on display You would see a bum and say, gee, that's piace This one's for the aliens See, America decided we were aliens too This one's for the aliens A bigger cultural gap than they had in their lose This one's for the aliens Less than us bread face, there's a tomato This one's for the aliens Is it archipelago or is it archipelago? A couple of capella, pack an acapella, pelicans pick up a piccolo and acapocus archipelago. A couple of capella, pack an acapella, pelicans pick up a piccolo and acapocus archipelago. <laughs> Here's one last sing along just for you. So join in with the billions and trust these dudes when we say we're a family that's all been in a womb. One more time, Manchester. You've been in a womb. I've been in a womb. You came out alright, and I did too. So next time you feel blue, remember this truth. We've all
Whoa! Whoa! So lovely. Um, absolutely Whoa. feel free to sit down. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it's so spontaneous. So spontaneous. So every single gig as well. It's a, amazing. A standing um, ovation and an encore. That's lovely. Thank wow. you. Um, honestly, Ooh. from the bottom of my heart, thank you. Manchester is our absolute like favourite place to come. You guys are amazing. So yeah, thank, thank you. you. It's it's such a joy to be here. Can we give a shout out for Colin on the sound? It's Colin. <laughs> woo, woo, woo. Legend. Uh, and yeah, uh, we are going to do two more songs. Uh, this next song we've not performed for 11 months, so <laughs> that's going to be exciting. But Including what well, we can't really count last night. That was not a performance, that was an embarrassment. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, att <laughs> we attempted it in, uh, in Canterbury. We should have known after the Welby. Oh, in, front of, in front of this warm audience, anything will go down. <laughs> We could not remember, uh, I'd say, 90% of the lyrics. Um, so, we'll be, we, at this point, sometimes there's anybody any requests. And the first three times we did that, everyone shouted out the same song, which was a song we very much knew the words to. Uh, and then last night, someone shouted out, do the Christmas song. Uh, and it's the 1st of December. And it's, well, but it wasn't yesterday. It was way too early. Now it's obviously <laughs> right. <laughs> there's, there's the rules. Uh, <laughs> And I said, I don't know it. And then Chris said, should we just try it? And then I said, no. And then the audience started shouting, try it, try <laughs> it. Uh, so we've practiced for tonight. Yeah. And then we were on stage and I forgot the words and somehow people were surprised. Uh, but <laughs> I, knew, I, I remember you just screaming, this isn't my fault. <laughs> <laughs> I, I was the only person in the room not responsible for what had happened. Uh, I feel like it was like a like a biopic film of like <laughs> Johnny Cash or something. But this isn't on me. <laughs> However, we've practiced at least two times and at most three times. See you guys. We never practiced. What? Well, we practice on stage usually, <laughs> but it was Manchester, so we had to put the effort in. Yeah, uh, it's true. And we've got all of the words yesterday. Um, <laughs> But yeah, this is a this is a Christmas song about Christmas for you. <laughs> Didn't practice the intro, to be fair. <laughs> Christmas is a lot of things to a lot of people. For some, it's seeing your family and or friends. For some, it's heading to the Frog and Bucket for a nice night of comedy on the first of December. <laughs> but no matter what you think about it. It's Christmas Just in case you don't remember It's Christmas The 25th of December It's Christmas There ain't no hidden agenda No matter what you think of it It's, it's literally, literally Christmas I mean, check your calendars, it's definitely happening So open up the chimneys of your hearts and let Santa in Spending time with family or spending half your salary On canapes and random cheese Stuff you don't actually need So rest your weary feet, it's a few days off Unless of course your Santa Claus is definitely not Or you're a legend in an emergency services job Or you stayed open for a last minute On the way to Christmas dinner present buying emergency service stations Wait, does that explain the random choice of gifts that you bring? What do you mean? I just know how much you love antifreeze and kindling. <laughs> <laughs> you can create your own traditions or start a Christmas band. Write a Christmas song and sing it out into the stands. It's Christmas. Did we mention that it's Christmas? It's Christmas. You can tell because it's Christmas. It's Christmas. Christmas, 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 Christmas. <laughs> no matter what you think of it. <laughs> It's literally Christmas Set like the scene for us, Chris Away in a manger No crib for a bed A rustic outhouse Was what the listing said It's hard to imagine that first starry night My mum's a midwife She told us what it would have been like ah! Ah, I can see the head! Ah, I can see ah, the head! I'm in a stable! Ah, oh my god! <laughs> Good acting. 
Why are there no placentas mentioned in the Christmas songs? Or whether Joseph knows if the labour would be long. I've never seen depicted in a festive mural Mary giving birth without an epidural. <laughs> Lovely old rhyme, that. <laughs> whether or not you're on board with the origins We can come together to celebrate the consequence It's Christmas! A donkey took a special journey It's Christmas! So why the hell do we eat turkey? It's Christmas! It might feel 24 days too early No matter what you think of it Literally Christmas! Go on, us. I mean, let's be honest, Christmas isn't all about some Santa bloke. The only reason we came here was to try out our cracker jokes. If the Christmas tree says nice to see you, to see you nice, would that make it a Norwegian spruce foresight? <laughs> that was the only line I remember yesterday. <laughs> Does Saint Nick's crew know if a revolution's brewing? An anti-Santa sentiment? The Santa Santa sense is it. Can the Santa Santa sense an anti-Santa sentiment? Well, can, can the Santa Santa sense an anti-Santa sentiment? Can you keep warm with only Christmas decorations? What? Tinsel insulation? It is simply scintillating. A scintillating tinsel insulation situation? A scintillating tinsel insulation situation? <laughs> you can't spell bauble without buble. You can't spell Father Christmas without fat. You can't spell Harry Christmas without Harry and Chris And you can't spell Brussels sprouts without a Russell in that Take it to the chorus <laughs> It's Christmas Such a joyful celebration It's Christmas For everyone from every nation It's Christmas There are some snowflakes on location No matter what you think of it it's literally Christmas We mentioned it 58 times It's Christmas That takes it up to 59 It's Christmas But oh, we still love it every time No matter what you think of it It's literally Christmas I mean, it's, it's literally Christmas It's not literally Christmas, obviously we It's that. literally Christmas Calling the song It's literally Christmas really limits the number of days It is relevant, Christmas. but we're very excited so It's literally Christmas it's, it's not, but it's but it's literally the, the spirit of Christmas and it's sort of in our it's hearts. literally the spirit Maybe of I Christmas. It. I, guess it's, I guess every day is literally Christmas if you want it to be. You know, sure. <laughs> I mean, it's literally Advent. It's literally Advent. <laughs> Speaking of Christmas, uh, there are a couple birthdays in. Because Christmas was a birthday of Jesus. Jesus, yeah. Sure. <laughs> Smashed sure. it. Yes. We do have some birthdays in. Stanley in the house. Yeah. Hey! Happy Fantastic. birthday. You're the Jesus of today. <laughs> <laughs> I mean... That, this, this is your Christmas. You need to I'm copyright saying. that as soon as possible. That's <laughs> going on a greeting card. <laughs> There's another Jesus of today, as it will be known for today. <laughs> Chris, my name's Sid. Chris, Chris Summerton in the house. Woo-wee! Okay. Ah, it's Gast- that, gastroenterology. That, that would, ah, oh, that's... Uh, I like well, that if... Because... Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Sorry. Um, I was just going to say, because Christmas is, is Christmas. So yeah. Chris's birthday would just be Christmas, which <gasps> pretty much sounds the same. I yeah. mean, but Chris- it's also Stanley-mas, which is a... <laughs> So we, did a, we did a, just quickly, we did a, a gig for, for Chris earlier in the year. Uh, it was a, a gastroenterology night. Absolutely. And you did an amazing email exchange with well, Origin. When, they, when, some, when they were booking it for us, they, as a joke, they were like, oh, have you got any rhymes for gastroenterologist? And quick as a flash, it in my back saying, that depends on what it is. Ooh. And they said, I think it's something to do with stomachs, actually. <laughs> so, <laughs> good to know. <laughs> Good to know who's representing but us. Should we do a, I feel like we should do a birthday. Yeah, happy birthday to Chris and Stanley. Anyone else? Ah, another one. Yeah? What, yes, fantastic. What's, what's your name? Louise, fantastic. Louise. We've got Stanley, a Louise and a Chris. What order? Uh, Reverse alphabetical. Uh, what? <laughs> Stanley, Louise and Christopher. Oh, we'll go with Chris, I reckon. Yeah. <laughs> happy birthday. Stanley, Louise and Christopher. That's doable. Any Love more? You. No, great, okay, cool. Yes. <laughs> uh, uh, yes. This was my birthday present. Oh, hey. Yes. 
And th- oh, other people oh, with wow. that. Wow. Okay. okay. If, the- if you like, would, would if you just shout out the name of someone who either one of those three or someone who's like someone near you that yeah. you appreciate, it's not. Yes, if, you, if you just look at the person next to you and say, "You're my Jesus," then <laughs> that would be Stanley, Louise, and Christopher, and Francis and Maisie. Amazing. Amazing. Lovely. Happy, Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Stanley, Stanley Louise, and Christopher, and Francis, and Maisie, well. and Jesus. Who knows when the actual day was? Happy birthday to you. Wonderful. We have just got one final song to finish yeah. on that we will not be worried about forgetting the words during. Um, thank you so much for having us. Uh, we've got some some CDs oh, yeah. and T-shirts with us. So if you if you haven't bought someone a birthday present or a Christmas present, hello. <laughs> it's a valid media format. Um, it's uh, these are our four shows uh, that we recorded live, and they are ten pounds each or two for twenty. <laughs> Goodness special, me. Special deal. Or, you know, or uh, 3 for 25. Uh. Sure. Um, we have also got some t-shirts made because we wanted to kind of celebrate the core message of the show. Uh, and so this one's simply a couple of Capella Packin' a Capella Pella 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 uh, we've actually just restocked in some of the smaller sizes of this, so we've got, we've got all of the sizes available. This one we've not had to restock in the smaller sizes yet, which is confusing, but it's just really simple. We've all been in a whip. Uh, so, so both of those are... If you know anyone we've who's got, been in a whip, got maybe... Some, we got some models in there. Oh, oh this is amazing. Ones. That makes yeah. us very happy. Um, and so at the end, we're, we're literally just going to come, gonna come be back on this, here. Well, we've dubbed we'll the merch a corner. Sort of merch, it's kind of this merch time. time. Uh, but also, if you want to just come and say hi, please do. We absolutely love doing that. That's free. And it is so much, so much more fun with other people in the room. So that's down to you. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, thank you, thank you for having us. Um, we'll be around afterwards. Come say hi. Otherwise, if you know anyone in Cambridge, Exeter, or London, whoa, there are left. there are three dates left. Um, three days left. Or I'm coming back here on the fourth yes. of April, doing an afternoon doing, show, doing a four thirty p.m. matinee poetry maths fun time. Uh, so if all of you want to come, then that would really help with the ticket sales. <laughs> uh, um, and yeah, the tickets are on their site. Um, but otherwise, uh, yeah, thanks so much for having us. This this is our final song. It's called 100%. And thank you. It's the kind of song we love to finish on it. It's the sort of song when the world gets you down, you know, when it says, have you mistaken a dolphin for a tortoise? <laughs> Find, find a reflective surface, you know, possibly a mirror. Look in that reflection and you sing yourself these specific words. I'm a flipping ten. I'm a ten, I'm a ten. You're a flipping ten. You're a ten, you're a ten. Put them together. Make it ten by ten. That's a hundred percent. Multiplication. Oh, I'm a flipping ten. I'm a ten, I'm a ten. You're a flipping ten. You're a ten, you're a ten. Put them together. Make it ten by ten. That's a hundred percent. One hundred percent. See there's those that look at life for themselves and they see flaws in it When I look at that way of looking, I see flaws in it Instead of negatives and blemishes, they're forced And I'm all about accentuating awesomeness You know in school, there's a boy or girl you like in a way Like, 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 but you're too frightened to say And all you want to do is find a time and a place To tell a friend, to tell a friend, to tell them right in their face When the hype of the chase subsides in the face You realise that they might not be your type anyway What would she like me when she's a nine and she's great And all this considered, I am an eight Oh no, you're a ten, yeah. Thank you. You're I mean, ten. Oh, to be honest, I, I feel it tonight. Two fives is ten. I did a math degree. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but this <laughs> first verse is actually set in the past, and since then I have blossomed. It's not the point of the song. I bring up a lot. Though. The point of the song is. How can our individual brilliance be distilled into digits if the intricacies in it do not fit into place? Even my inner mathematician is a little bit suspicious when the subtleties are different, so I'm given a space. We are all too concerned with those margins of error, and I figured it's a bit of a waste. 
So I think I find a simpler way. I'ma look into the mirror and say, I'm a flippin' ten. I'm a ten, I'm a ten. You're a flippin' ten. You're a ten, you're a ten. Put them together. Make it ten by ten. That's a hundred percent. One hundred percent. Oh, I'm a flippin' ten. I'm a ten, I'm a ten. And you're a flippin' ten. You're a ten, you're a ten. Put them together. Make it ten by ten. That's a hundred percent. One hundred percent. Sometimes snot comes out when I laugh. You're still a ten. Still get the gig whistle by fart in the bar. You're still a ten. Just one time, the two combined, and I ended up with snot in the bar. <laughs> You're still a ten. Thank you. <laughs> Sometimes I get real low. Still a ten. And deep down, the doubt takes hold. You're still a ten. But as long as I know You're a ten. Well, it is well with my soul. So you're a ten, you're a ten, you're a ten. Everybody is a different place is a ten. My wife is a ten, I'm dating a ten. When people see us, they say there's an eight and a ten. Oh, no, you're a ten, man. Thank you so much. You're Have you ten. cut your nails recently? <laughs> <laughs> you're a ten. Uh, yeah, no, they say, you're they say you're a ten, you're yeah. a ten. They point near me. And then the point it goes from you're a ten to you're an eight. You're an eight. It sounds, sounds like you're like an eight. Yeah, yeah. Confusing. <laughs> Who knows who wet themselves? There was so much crying involved and sort of. It's not. It's not the not the point of the song. The point of the song is. We see the best in ourselves, the worst in ourselves The question is, oh, what do we put first in ourselves? This ain't just a case of expressing your talents In the grand scheme of things, we're addressing that balance We're told we have to think in a particular way But these rules we are given to play Well, I'ma start a revolution today When I look into the mirror and say I'm a flippin' ten I'm a ten, I'm a ten You're a flippin' ten You're a ten, you're a ten Put them together Make it ten by ten That's a hundred percent Let's do it in German it been I not say You're a flippin' ten Do this now kind of say Put them together Bring it easy sound That's a hundred percent A hundred percent When it comes to juggling I'm a 7.3 If there's cocktails involved there might be slightly more When they join the school choir somebody turned around and said It's really interesting how you sing in harmony the whole time Didn't actually know there was a thing I was singing a lot closer to a four When, yeah. when it comes to crying in films, I'm an eight. I'm a four if it's crying in sports. England getting knocked out is depressing for sure, but it's nothing on Frodo leaving for Valinor. May, may, may not look a lot of mathematical sense, but when you bring it all together, we are smashing the tens. If anybody here is still sat on the fence, Chris, have a little natter with them. Well, you might not know the person sitting next to you, but turn to that person next to you. Look deep into their eyes right now, get ready to sing it out. I'm a flipping ten. I'm a ten, I'm a ten. You're a flipping ten. You're a ten, you're a ten. Put them together. Make it ten by ten. That's 100%. Gonna keep going till everyone joins in. I'm a flipping I'm a ten, I'm a ten. You're a flippin' ten. You're a ten, you're a ten. Put them together. Make it ten by ten. That's a hundred percent. Let's do it in French. Oh, I'm a flippin' ten. Je suis en D. <laughs> you're a flippin' ten. To wet and D or C. <laughs> Put them together. Put them together. <laughs> That's a hundred percent. Son per son. Son per son. Bring it home, Chris. <laughs> I see trees of green, red roses too. I'm a flippin' ten, and so are you. And I think to myself, sing along if you know the word. What a wonderful world! Thank you so much, Manchester.
Oh, well, that was fun, wasn't it? I feel better now than when I started. I feel better now than when I started. You look better now than when you started. Oh, phew. The only way is up. Um... <laughs> we love performing live. Right um, now, that might not be possible. No. One day again, we'll be out there. Yeah. In the meantime, we, we've tried to find ways to connect mm. that don't require a physical connection. And, and video is a way to do that. Yeah. I hope you're doing all right. Hope you're doing good. Look after yourselves. And hope you enjoyed the video. Bye.